Welcome back to the Nihilist Media Podcast. This is Bonding with Bond. I'm Mark. And I'm Nicholas. And today we did Pierce Brosnan's second Bond effort, Tomorrow Never Dies. And it's a film that a lot of people say sucks. It has a 52% on Rotten Tomatoes, a <laughs> 6.5 on IMDb. And uh, those people are insane. Yeah, I really liked it also. Yeah, this is a great Bond movie. This is top tier. Yeah, we were... A little skeptic that it might have been just nostalgia for Mark. So we we were ready. Nope, but I won. Yeah, it was good. My opinions are superior. <laughs> <laughs> I uh like there there was some little things that weren't great, but like overall I really liked it. Yeah. I mean the story makes sense. The story makes a lot more sense than like people give it credit for. Yeah, that's it, because going into it you were like, hey, this one's going to be all over the place. But this actually, I kept straight for most of it. Yeah, I think it, like, people were, because, like, they, they were writing it as they went along for the most part. And, like, it makes a lot of sense. It, it works. It does its job. We have our opening title sequence where we have, we're induced to Gupta. And Gupta. he is getting a America decoder. Mm-hmm. at a terrorist convention yeah, it's like, in Russia. I think they say it's a terrorist flea market. Yeah. Uh, and the, so we have my 6 watching this happen, you know, and um, we have, I think his name's Colin or whatever. I, I think it was. Yeah. And then we have M and the Admiral, and they're like, yo, this is going down. This is a person's there. This person's there. And then the Admiral is just like, all right, I'm going to send nukes or a, a missile, to, send kill, a missile yeah. to kill everybody in the vicinity. And um, M's like, uh, you're a little hasty. Our man's still there. And he's like, yeah, we'll get him out because yeah. I'm sending the missile. He's like, and doesn't he say, I don't think you have the balls for this? No, no, it's, no, no, it's, no, later, no. it's later on. That's that's oh. real good. Yeah. That's like right at the end, too. So he's like, so he just sends it in anyway. And then Bond's like, uh, do you not see what I'm looking at? And they're like, yeah, it's a plane. And he, and, then, and, <laughs> and then a jeep. <laughs> and then a, ju- a jeep moves and they have like nuclear missiles. And they're like, yeah. oh, <laughs> like, oopsie. And he's, and then they're like, and, they're, and he's like, yeah, stop the fucking missile. And they try to stop the missile, but the missile won't stop. And they're like, uh, this, if that hits, that's going to make Chernobyl look like a fucking picnic. Yeah. And Bond, and all of a sudden they lose communication with Bond, mm-hmm. and because uh, they're like Bond, get the fuck out of there, just get out, just get out, get out. Which doesn't matter how far fast. Yeah, he's not gonna outrun it. He's not, yeah. yeah, he's not getting out, out of there. Um, he has like four minutes though, or five minutes. Yeah, and he's he. We, we see a, a Russian soldier or terrorist guy with a cigarette. He's like, and then Bond comes in with a lighter, lights mm-hmm. it up for him. The guy looks up like, wait, who just lit my thing? He punches him. <laughs> Filthy habit. Boom, it's James Bond, baby. <laughs> yeah. Paris Brosnan. Uh, killing it, as usual. Yeah. And, Very solid start. And he, we have an incredible pre-title action sequence where he's yeah. blowing shit up. He's making diversions. He's rolling around, grabbing machine guns, mm-hmm. shooting people. Trying to steal the plane that has the nuclear missiles on it. Because mm-hmm. if, if he can't get away from blowing it up, maybe he can get the nukes away from the missile that's about to blow up. Yeah. And it's it, pretty good. Oh yeah, it's amazing. And then he ends up getting into the plane. He flies off, but another guy catches him. He also mm-hmm. has a guy inside the plane with him who's knocked out. Mm-hmm. Um, they they go for they go through a little bit of a standstill. He barely makes it out of the uh, the explosion. Mm-hmm. As he makes it out, the guy behind him starts strangling him, and the other plane tries shooting shooting them down. Which is at that point, I think the guy behind him is like, "All right, actually, Bond, we should do teamwork because this guy's trying to kill <laughs> both of us right now." Um, but Bond ends up shooting the ejector seat mm-hmm. of the guy in the back into the guy about like the yeah. other guy. <laughs> the the plane that was tracing him, he's now right above him. And, and we have should... our great quote, you know, backseat drivers. Yep. And he's like, uh, "Tell the admiral where he, ask, ask the admiral where he wants his missiles." Yep. And it's just like, and we boom, baby, we're into the title sequence of the movie. It's it's a good pre. Yeah, I think Brosnan on the whole has like. Top tier um, pre-title sequences. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this one because it feels like a, a different mission plus something that's gonna yeah. happen. It, it's the best of both worlds. That's a. There's been a couple that have been like, oh, this feels very different, and there's this tiny thing that ties in, and it's yeah, like, it's like Goldeneye. This, yeah, Goldeneye exactly. felt like something completely different, but then it becomes like the crux of the film. Yeah, like in in this one. He he takes the nukes and 
saves the day that way. But the encryptor is still taken by the other guy. Like, it's kind of ignored at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, James Bond just saved the day, but he didn't actually do what the mission was. And now the mission begins to return the thing that he wasn't able to get. Yeah. I like this one. Yeah. I And then what, after that, we have a, our big plot moment in the film, which is that we have a mm. ship, a stealth ship, basically doing what they did in Spy Who Loved Me. Yeah. Where they're taking ships. Well, they're not taking ships this time. They're putting a... They're faking... Uh, it's it's kind of cool. So the they're faking a Chinese attack on a British ship, and then they fake that the British shot down a Chinese plane that was going around the uh, the boat, and it is pretty cool. the The whole thing he's trying to do is uh, it's a he's it's taking that idea that I like where somebody's trying to start another world war, usually between Russia and America, but this time it's between China and America. And he's not doing it for like money or whatever. He's doing it for uh, I want to print the newspapers. <laughs> yeah, we meet. Uh, we also meet Stamper, who's our other henchman of the film. Uh, fake uh, to, like, Graham. Group, uh, yeah, hey, fake Graham. We're like, I don't know if he's worse or better than Eric. I think he's worse. I really don't like the ending for this boy. Mm. Um, yeah. Of of the of the three henchmen in this film, he is the worst. Yeah. Um, Gupta's great. Gupta's great, and Doctor Kemper is fantastic. Oh, he's top A-tier. tier. Oh yeah. Um, and we we well we were told we're basically shown that uh, Stamper's a vicious son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, they take this thing into when they go inside inside the uh, the British ship mm-hmm. where they sink it. They have like this device that goes through it and can like destroy it for with them from with yeah, the inside. It's, it's very weird it's uh it's a torpedo but it's got these like uh grinding teeth on the front of it mm-hmm. that you'd use to like dig a tunnel but they do it to dig through the side of the ship and it's remote controlled so they can control where in the ship it starts digging through yeah and it doesn't blow up which kind of plays into it because they're all braced ready for the explosion to happen so they're just kind of sitting there while their ship gets chewed apart mm-hmm and then, uh, boom. And then Carver is being, is we meet Elliot Carver, who's our villain. He's like mm-hmm. a media mogul. He's supposed to be like a Rupert Murdoch type character. He's, but he's also supposed to be like a Steve Jobs-esque looking thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I can definitely see that had uh, a impact on his appearance. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we also have like so he's basically giving all these news stories where he's just like oh whatever this happened here blah 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 and then he's mm-hmm. going over this people and it, we're, we're told that he's launching a network that's gonna be 24 hours of news which yeah is like, i'm pretty sure cnn was already a thing at this point <laughs> his uh his last satellite is going up mm. and they're celebrating the completion yeah um and uh and then just to jump back to the ships too, once the I forget the name of the boat, but it's the the once the British boat is sunk, the uh secret ship also shoots down one of the Chinese fighters. And again it's to get tensions between the British and the Chinese. And they dive into the ship and take one of the cruiser missiles out of it. Cause mm. they plan to use that again later in the movie. Because now they have that British cruiser missile yeah um so carver gets a call from stamper and stamper is like well basically he's like kill the survivors or whatever yeah. and stamper goes out on the boat and shoots everybody and he has mm-hmm. like this whole he makes a newspaper headline um british soldiers murdered Mm-hmm. And that's our character. That's our villain. Yeah. I like Elliot Carver. I can see why other people wouldn't like Elliot Carver because they're like, this isn't a Bond level villain. Yeah, but I'm like, I like when Bond villains aren't Bond villain level villains. Yeah, and I think it's fine. I think it's a little dumb, but I'm okay with it. I like. I, I've always been interested in that idea of so what trying to create the news. So like, yeah. he's he's like making atrocities happen this so he can make money off of reporting about it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a cool idea. And it's something that they haven't really touched on. Because I also like these not 
Like I like Goldfinger. I like, hey, I just want all the gold. Like, yeah, I'm just gonna ruin everybody's economy. Yeah, not I'm gonna take over the moon. We catch up at Bond at Oxford, and uh, he's sleeping with a Danish teacher. And uh, they're having sex, and he gets a call from Money Penny, and Money Penny's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I'm just, you know, checking up on my my Danish." Yeah. And she's like, "You need to get here now, actually. It was an emergency." He's like, "I'll be there in an hour." She's like, "Try thirty minutes." Mm-hmm. And um, when he gets there, oh no, well, she, she's like, "What does Money Penny say?" Uh, she M walks over and she goes, "Don't ask." And then M goes, "Uh, don't tell." Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. He he says she says that. Oh, James, you're always a cunning linguist. Oh yeah. 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 I was like, good one. Uh, and then Bond shows up. The admiral is like, oh, we're gonna send our naval troops to China. You know, with and we can take twenty take us like forty eight hours. Yeah. Blah, they want to. They want to send. So where are the ships? At? Oh, and should we talk about the Dakota location? So one of the main thing, I, if it hasn't been talked about yet, it comes up soon. The uh, when the ship sank, it sent out its final location, so that the British can come recover the ship. But because of the decoder that was stolen in the uh, pre-title sequence, he's there's I think it's seventy miles off where they say they are, mm-hmm. and that that's gonna become a big deal when the british send their entire armada to the south china sea closer to china than they're supposed to be to find something that ends up that will end up not being there and then we get our whole villain plan of he's gonna make them strike each other again but that comes into play in third act yeah and so i think it was i think it's the prime minister or the ministry of defense with m Mm -hmm. and the admiral it's one of them for sure. Yeah, it's, and, he's clearly the boss. <laughs> and M is like, we we need to do more investigation of why this is happening. And he's just like, no, we gotta go in there and fight. Blah blah. blah. And she's just like, he's like, I don't think you have the balls for this job, M. And she's like, well, I, I don't think about my balls. Yeah. And the goes, oh, the oh, perk oh, of oh, not having them is I don't have to always think with them. Yeah. And then Bond shows up and he was just like, uh, I think with my balls. <laughs> he's like, funny thing about me is I do both. Yeah. I. You know what? I think I'll fall in love again in this movie. <laughs> yeah. And he um, basically they're putting Bond on the case. That's, mm-hmm. that's the gist of what's going on now. He has 48 hours to figure out what's going on, and it feels a lot longer than 48 hours. Oh, it definitely does. It, it feels, I could believe that this was an entire week, honestly. Yeah. From Dude, it's only 48 hours from that original party all the way to them shooting the missile in the stealth boat. Like that's insane. That almost feels wrong. <laughs> yeah. Like it. It feels. It honestly feels like four or five days. Because that would mean everything happens like the day that, you know, who dies. Yeah. Every. Yeah. Every. Uh. Every moment that passes is, even if there's a slow fade out, it's actually only forty five seconds later when we get back with them. Exactly. <laughs> um. Well, it, it's weird because there's like. I don't think the launch party is in China or anything. It's and in then, Hamburg. Yeah, so they got the global traveling in there too. Oh yeah, never mind. Yeah, he goes to America. He goes to an American base in China. Never mind. It's starting to check out a little bit more for me at least. Yeah. I was like, he does a lot of traveling for one day. Yeah. It takes a lot of eight hour flights for one day. <laughs> that man is jet lagged. Yeah. Um, he doesn't know where he is. Exactly. He's on bond time. <laughs> uh, on bonded time. <laughs> we get uh, the introduction, kind of the mission, where M's like, hey, we got you into a party. Uh, it's going to be the, the channel launch party because the satellite are all linked up or whatever well she was like she's like elliot car like the the transmission mm-hmm. came in from elliot carver so you're gonna look at El- elliot carver and mm-hmm. she's like you know his wife paris carver <sighs> yeah, just use the names we know stop trying to make these fake lasting relationships that weren't there i think i've talked about this ad nauseum on the channel but uh this was supposed to be Sylvia Trench, but they're like, no one get it. So, James Van Harden Paris. Why? Why? <laughs> just just do it right. Just make it. And make it, again, it could be any Bond girl. Yeah. It could be fucking 
Tante Romanova. <laughs> it could be fucking because that one would work. It would work with fucking Domino. Yeah. It would work with any Solitaire. Any of them. He doesn't call any of them back. <laughs> yeah. It could be any Vaughn girl. <laughs> yeah. I think the ones that it could actually be, I think it could be Sylvia Trench, Tante Romanova, uh, Pam Bouvier, or Kara. Mm. Those are I the... feel like Kara would be way too soon. Maybe even Pam, too. I feel like it has to be a little bit out. I'm I'm going off of people that Bond feasibly actually fell in love with. Oh, okay. But imagine like Kara. It's like I was searching for you, couldn't find you, found this guy I'm married now. I love him. Well, I guess she betrays him really fast too. Mhm. It could I could see. I would less likely believe that than other ones. I'd but... only accept that if they brought back the same actress. Yeah, that's a good point. The other ones like that's Yeah, fine. it can be name whatever. Yeah, like it can, like Sylvia Trent, yeah. like Pam <laughs> Bouvier and Kara would have to be the same actress for me to like actually get on board. Mm-hmm. And but with Kara and Pam, yeah, yeah, you know, I I don't I don't, I don't I'm trying to think if there's another one who I could accept. I can also expect like BB. <laughs> I can accept Tiffany Case from Diamonds Are Forever, which is a weird thing for me to say, but yeah, no, it's not in America, so. But she's clearly American. Oh, is it? Yeah, is, and I guess he's an American, too. He's just weird and has this global presence. Uh, Elliot, that is. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> and she was always into con people, and she's always, like, a, she was a criminal. She's yeah, only, that she's could almost work from... out better. Because, as we'll find out shortly, there is no hesitation <laughs> to betray him. <laughs> yeah. It's like one half conversation and she's ready to get off board. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what's weird is I'm starting to go um, I, as we're as we're continuing this podcast and I think it might just be the Stockholm Syndrome of more. <laughs> but there is a uh, part of me that's like is Diamonds Are Forever that bad? I, Dude, I told you it was good and you said this is the worst thing ever and I was like some of it's alright. I was like, the same. You gave yeah. it a one and a half too. So, but there were parts I liked in it, and you were like, "The only good part is him saying what floor is you." <laughs> yeah, I'm giving it. I think, I it's, think it's a good story. It's just not done well in that movie. Yeah, but I think I think that if like if we're putting Diamonds Are Forever up against the '60s, it's oh yeah, one of the worst things ever. Yeah. But I think if we're putting it up against the '80s, it's 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 fine. Yeah, and that's the thing that's <laughs> terrible about trying to do this rating system is I'll like look back at my ratings and be like, well, actually, I kind of looking back on that, I kind of like it more than a lot of these other ones. And if there's even like Doctor No now, I'm kind of like, am I just remembering it a lot nostalgia wise, or is it really this? great i feel like it should almost be lower i don't know it's fucking great okay there's because dr no every time i go to do my ratings which you can find in the description for our letterbox ratings i go wow dr no is still three huh like huh this is pretty high up here (laughs) for the first one too i mean usually the first is usually i mean yeah that's true I mean, my I feel like my my top three Star Wars movies is ranked never cha- hasn't changed. Uh, <laughs> yep. Phantom, ever. Clone Wars, <laughs> Phantom Menace is number one always. Um, <laughs> we should get back to the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, we should. Um, so he's Paris Carver. He knows Paris Carver. Mm-hmm. He's just like, yeah, we 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 knew each other in a different life. Blah blah blah. And Money Penny is like, well, I guess you can pump her from information. <laughs> yeah, and and, and then Nick was just like, "You're in front of your boss." Yeah, because then she says, "Uh, you get to decide how many pumps it'll take." And I was like, "Okay, that's weird." And then he goes, "Man, I wish I could pump you, Money Penny." <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening? I was like, "Em's right here." <laughs> yeah. James checks in at the airport in Germany, and then this man walks. He's getting up his over. rental car. <laughs> yeah, he gets his rental car, and this man comes up to him. He's like, "What kind of insurance do you want, you fucking bastard?" <laughs> I 
I got a bad feeling about you. You want all the insurance? Yeah, it's Q. Q's Q's the uh Q is going to give him his rental car and he's mm-hmm. getting uh his collision insurance, property insurance, every insurance you can yeah. get he gets. Oh yeah. Uh cuz he's going to need it. And he was like, "Do you do you think I need that insurance?" He's like, "You'll need it for me, 007, <laughs> if you don't bring this car back in pristine order." Which is just like, "Yeah, you know, he's not going to bring oh, this yeah. car back in pristine order. It's going to be destroyed." I don't think this might not be the worst destruction he's put a car through, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's in one piece at the end. <laughs> that's it's, that's true. It hasn't blown up. Yeah, it's which not, about it's, half of them are. <laughs> it's not the living daylights, where he destroyed the entire vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Piece by piece. Um, also, I have to say, once again, Pierce Brosnan and Desmond Llewellyn have the best chemistry in the series. Yeah, there's, this is. I think they really get what we like in the Q scenes. Like, he does the annoying stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's, he kind of gives the, the dad vibe. Yeah, it's, it's just because Brosnan does the Connery thing of, I'm going to touch this, and I'm not, so, I'm not supposed to touch it. And Q's like, can you fucking stop doing that? Right. Give me the controller. Yeah. I could drive this car. And then he opens the car door, and the car door has a woman's voice being like, fasten your seatbelts, please. Yeah. And he's just like, I thought you'd be more used to taking orders from a woman. And he's like, I think we've met. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he get and like there's also the a phone. Good, the phone is a good bit where he's like, you, you listen here, and you speak here. Oh, is that what I've been doing wrong all these years? <laughs> And it has like a fingerprint scanner. It's got an electric mm. shock thing, and it's got like a knife on it. Uh, and I think it has a key, like a, a, a right. Yeah, like a an everything type key. Yeah, the antenna comes off, and uh, we get a lot of those. This key opens everything, which I like. Yeah, and then the car also has like a like a pad on it on the phone where mm-hmm. it, you can move the car. It's like a little drone controller now. Yeah, and Q is driving like an old man. He's just like, oh, it, it takes a while to you know, to figure out how the doohickeys work, but it's it's it's, it's a marvelous. And Bar- Bond takes the thing and it, he's he's you know he's at the magic mm-hmm. touch. Oh and, yeah, uh, he's driving it all around. And he almost hits Q with the car. You think it's green screened out? You think it's a guy laying down, or you think it's actually remote control? Uh, it's definitely a fucking guy laying down. Okay. There's there's some good remote control stuff, but I think this is that's probably like late 2000s is when yeah, it starts I, to get to I don't think that they were doing that in 1997. Yeah. Or more 1996 when they probably I'd, shot this. I'd be interested to see cuz I've seen some funny ones where it's a guy like uh he's driving the car to make it look like nobody's driving the car. It's a fully reclined seat and then on his lap he just has another fake chair that's standing straight up like an erection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it looks like nobody's in the chair. I I hope it's one of those ones. <laughs> yeah. Bond goes to Elliot Carver's party and he is under the guise of I'm a banker and he's like, "Oh, what's your name?" He's like, "My name's Bond, James Bond." Mm-hmm. It's just like I'm pretty sure Elliot Carver would know who James oh, Bond yeah. is. Um but he, they start call, talking, and we don't do the Spectre thing yet. We all we, we meet Wei Lin, oh, right, yeah, yeah. who's a Chinese uh, newscaster, mm-hmm. and the who thing is that in. yeah, who snuck in. And the thing is that China is the only country that isn't buying mm-hmm. his package. Yeah, they're not allowing him to broadcast in there, which I call bullshit. Because I'm pretty positive North Korea isn't broadcasting this. That's a good point. This shit into their country. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, yeah, we're not going to let you talk about the British versus the Chinese here. <laughs> we're sorry. Yeah, they don't. How exist. did you get this number? <laughs> yeah. Um, Bond gets cock blocked by Waylon, and mm-hmm. he's, he's like, "All right, well, I'm just going to go see what I can stick myself into." And then it's when he sees Paris Carver. Yeah. Oh, hey, Paris. Yeah. Who, are for, for now, intents and purposes, we're going to refer to as Sylvia Trench, <laughs> so I don't, so I don't start getting mad. Um, <laughs> he sees her and he's like, "Oh, hello, Sylvia!" And she turns around, and slaps him across the face. He's like, "I, I yeah." Yep. And you know, they they have a lot of biting back and forth. You know, and she's just like, you know, I, you know, one day you just were gone. He's like, something came up. Oh, something always come came up. Which I think feel, feeds into the Sylvia Trench link. She, yep, would have worked way better. Weeks. Um, would have been perfect. Yeah. 
And how many times could it have possibly come up with her? We saw it happen twice. With no, no, no. I mean with Paris. Oh, with Paris. I don't know. Yeah. Um. She also says, "Like, tell me, James, you still sleep with a gun under your pillow?" Which, you know, in all of our times of watching Bond, not once have we seen him have a gun under his pillow. So continuity error. <laughs> um. I, I believe it. Yeah, because if Bond was sleeping with a gun under his bed, then the spider scene wouldn't have happened. You're right. He would have shot it off of him. Imagine no sweat at all. Camera lighting just stays flat. He just, boom, <laughs> and goes back to bed. <laughs> um, uh, That's in Dr. No, right? Yes. Yeah, and Dr. No's still top three. <laughs> yeah. Nick literally does not remember a single movie we've watched. There's, I have my notes now will help me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, and it's been like, a yeah, lot there's of there's that media. one where where Bond does Asian face, and it was, that was in that was definitely in From Russia with Love. What is, so? What have we? There's there's been nine. This is the nineteenth Bond movie. Yeah, we've watched. You think, yes. you think they're like two average two hours, one fifty mm-hmm. or something? Let's do two hours, so it's easy. So it's like forty hours, and then a two hour podcast after each one. So we're at eighty hours. <laughs> it's like. There's a lot of stuff for me to remember. <laughs> it's, it's been pretty fast. It, it's just too. it's just funny because like sometimes Nick would be like, "Oh, it's like that thing that they did like five movies ago." I'm like, Nick, that was last week. Oh yeah, that literally happened today while we were watching the movie. Yeah. No, it was I couldn't remember who the computer guy was. Boris. Boris. Well, yeah. that was that was one thing, and then you, and then the other thing was that he were like, "Oh, it's like it's like in Living Daylight, so they did like the see through fo- floors or whatever." And oh like, yeah. No, yeah. Nick, that was Golden Eye. <laughs> He's like, "No, the library scene from from Living Daylight." They did um, what is that called? I don't know. It's like the the floors that are like a metal mesh, yeah, instead yeah. of just a solid floor, so Bond can shoot through them. Yeah, um, Carver, the Carvers reunite, and uh, they do not feel like a married couple whatsoever. No, it's terrible. And uh, the Bond starts doing his Spectre of Defeat thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's not good. I it's all it's. There's two good like whips in it. Yeah, well, he does the first one, and Nick's like. I'm out, and, yeah. uh, and then, then it goes on for another minute. And then Bond, but then Bond saves it. He was, he's just like, oh, maybe you should write a book on the subject, Mister Bond. And he's just like, no, I think I would be adrift. Yeah, you know? I think that one's all right. I think Spectre defeats. Still, I, I'd be, I think tier. I'd be lost at sea. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, the Spectre, Spectre defeat is top tier. Like you cannot kind of top that. That's perfect. But um, so Carver now knows that Bond knows something about Carver. Yeah. And it's just, you know, Bond's doing his Bond thing. And he walks away with... Um, Paris. Sylvia Trench. <laughs> and uh, Bond and Waylon are like, she's like, what kind of banking are you into, Mr. Bond? He's like, oh, hostile takeovers. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Stamper or some goons yeah. take Mr. Bond to... Uh, A soundproof room. Yeah, and they start beating his ass while Carver g- delivers the big speech of his mm-hmm. launching of his new network. Bond ends up kicking their asses, and uh, it's a great little fight scene. And it's it's great because he lets them beat him up for a little while, and then goes, you "Know what? Fuck you." Now is perfect. <laughs> and then he turns off the signal for Carver's mm-hmm. channel. When the when the fight scene's going on, we get some cool scenes from. Uh, there's a guy on like the studio management side of the recording booth. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can see them fighting through the glass, but he's distracted by the TV of what's going on right now. And uh, it's just silent while they're fighting. And then you see Bond slam a guy through the glass and we get sound again. I liked that a lot. Yeah. Um. After that, we go to a what happens after that? I think Bond. Oh, Bond's in his hotel room. Yes, and drinking. He's, we get our. Uh, he's drinking, holding the gun. Un, <laughs> you know, his sleeves rolled up, tie untied, and he's just sitting there waiting. Yeah, he puts the silencer on his gun. Yeah, he's just waiting to kill somebody. Yeah, and I'm like, he's that's like, what I like to see. Someone's coming, but who? So we get before that, we get the reveal that nope, that was it was after that. I think you're right. No, why does he send her there? Doesn't he send her because 
I think yeah, well, we we, well, we cut away from him sitting there, and we go into Elliot Carver's place, mm-hmm. and he ta- he asks, she's like, it's okay. Well, he's watching the news, and the news is making fun of the fact that his thing went off the air, mm-hmm. and they and she's like, it's okay. Elliot, Elliot is like, it's not for me. No, no, no. When uh, Gloopy Boy calls him in the room and goes, hey. That happens after this. Oh, okay. Uh, so he's basically like, how do you know Mr. Bond? He's like, I barely know him, blah, blah, blah. Like, mm-hmm. we were, like I said, we were, he was my, he was seeing my roommate and he's like, I kind of don't believe you. Yeah. And he goes into Gupta's thing and Gupta's like, yeah, uh, Bond's a secret agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, your wife said this, tell you James, you see sleep with a gun under your pillow. And then, uh, and then you see John the Price is like, mm. yeah, that was a, what I imagine his internal voice was doing too. Yeah. That was pretty perfect. And who shows up to Bond's uh, hotel by this point but Parrot, I mean, Sylvia Trench. <laughs> and um, he's like, I wonder who Carver would send. Uh, I'm not dealing with you, so just go back and say you couldn't get anything out of me. Yeah. And she and she was like, I'm here, aren't I? And he's like, yeah, but you've, you've made your bed and I don't sleep in it anymore, remember? And she's like, yeah, but I'm standing in your doorway. And then they have sex. Yeah. She says, I'm not here to get something out of you. I'm here to get something yeah. in me. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Um, does she do anything for the movie? No. She's just pretty flat now. Because <laughs> it, there's... It would make more sense. Like, there's... Her death is important because it kind of jump starts him... A revenge more, mission. Yeah, he becomes more violent, but it, it doesn't really make sense because he's like, "Oh yeah, I knew you forever ago." And then we bang now, and now you die, and now I'm so mad. Again, if it was Trench, it'd be so much better. It's like, oh my for this, god! For all other purposes, let's just say it's Sylvia Trench. Then it's a good movie. <laughs> but does she give him any plot information? Yeah. I, she really? she tells him where the secret base is and the way to get in. Oh, then yeah, she is important. Never mind. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Oh, okay, I had I had no memory of her doing <laughs> like saying anything. The trap than... door I hated. She's the reason he knew that was there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm sitting here thinking like, did she just show up, make a bunch <laughs> of things of like, I hate you, but I like you, and then and die. then fuck and then die. <laughs> I'm like, is She's that what ha- am I remembering this correctly? Again, I think there should be a little bit more, but. No, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that if it's trench, but it is trench. For all intents and purposes, it's this is trench. Stop. She tr- got a name change, Nick. <laughs> Stop trying to do our review on a movie that we're making, not the movie we're watching. <laughs> this is like the most minor change that we've ever made for like our a movie we're we making. We've changed Bond. the Bond girl in like forty percent of these movies. It might be more, but th- but usually when we change the Bond girl, we change every their entire motivation and why they're doing things. Yeah, this one with this one we're changing the name, and yeah. that's it. That's I all mean, we've changed so far. Yeah, this is like this that's is so. Have to change. Too. This is such a this is such a little tiny little yeah. like like put a white out on something and just write your name. There have been other times where we've done exactly this. Where no, it's like, oh, just change your. To, but we would to be the exact character we're changing first to. But we would, but we would do. We would, we would always change the plot. Like yeah, View to a Kill. Make it Tilly. <laughs> View to a Kill was like the entire thing was different because I was like, yeah, Triple X was the the person, and it's like the KGB. It been KGB is way more involved and whatnot. And then yeah. the other time we changed it, I think was Octopussy, but that was just pussy galore. And that was like I that changes like her entire so thing. I, I I need to take notes. Goldfinger, the, the only I, the Goldfinger change was we we just wanted it to be Tilly instead of Pussy Galore. Yeah, but you could also just had to be Pussy Galore and had the girl original girl just be Jill Galore or whatever the fuck. Yeah, Jill Galore. <laughs> yeah. So, I can see that. I, I, f- I feel like we've done even more. This is like that. the least of all of our, ch- our, like, oh, we're rewriting this movie. This is like the one we've done the least amount. So far. I wouldn't change many things about this. I think the only thing I would change is that, but. I'll have to think about it as we go through. 
Because I I don't believe any of the love interest in this movie either. But I don't think that like they're really buying. They're just hooking up. They're not like in love. They're that's that. I I bought it as like a, oh you know what you're kind of hot. I'm hot. Let's fuck. Yeah. I don't know. I thought there was something that was about them loving each other, but maybe there wasn't even. Maybe I just thought of that. Yeah. Like he says, like how romantic when he's like he refuses to like let her die. Oh yeah, they don't even have sex. They do at the end. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. I'm okay with this. Yeah. I don't know why I thought they were had to be in love at some point. Because there was one point where I looked at you and I was like, I really don't believe. Well, because they of do this like the, they try to do the oh whole the shower pool. thing. Yeah, but that's like they're they're yeah. the shower ring when they're because they're handcuffed Stupid. together. Stupid. She had handcuff key the whole time. Stupid. Not Nick's just trying to find flaws. <laughs> it's this movie sucks. Yeah. I see what everyone's saying. Yeah, Moonraker (laughs) two. It's pretty good though. Um, I don't think it's perfect, but so Bond after Bond Bond has sex with Paris, he goes to do well. First, Carver's like, "You're gonna die." Yeah, and but Bond goes to the newspaper place and Mm -hmm. because the the secret lab space is above the newspaper plant, Mm -hmm. or is it under? It's above above yeah she says top floor and that's why the fire escape goes right into it Ah. because that's where the the safe is that has the encoder Mm -hmm. and uh while he's down in the um one of the original like continuity problems i have with the movie i don't care about anymore so yeah trapdoor thing i thought was dumb but it's whatever yeah he sneaks in and then he um he goes down and he pretty much instantly finds the decoder yeah he he, he catches them leaving the office yeah and going that thing's worth 300 million dollars you break it you buy it mm-hmm. and bond goes okay yeah that's probably what we're looking for <laughs> there's also a nice little gag there that they like bond sees some porn in there i totally missed that the first time yeah <laughs> But he finds a safe behind a picture of the satellite and then uh, does a little safe crack. He uses the fingerprint scanner that's built into the phone, which I forget if we mentioned when it was in the queue scene. But uh, reads the fingerprint off of the glass, puts it right in front of it, and boom, it's open. And we got money. uh, Drugs. And, of course... The, the encryptor. <laughs> bah, 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 and then a big action sequence happens. Because a they, very long action sequence. It's a great one, though. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty good. I'd say it's like high mid. This is a better action sequence than anything that happened in the 80s. I was going to say, you're going to make fun of more. <laughs> yeah. I'm making it's, fun of Dalton. Really? I think Dalton... Uh, this isn't better than... I'm just gonna call it the library scene in the la- in Golden Finger. Golden Eye. Golden Eye. Damn, it's been a while since I've been able to make that <laughs> a mistake. Yeah. Like, I think this is a fantastic like chase and shoot scene because it's just like there's a lot of him, like rolling around on the ground and fucking shooting shit. And- yeah, I combine this with this one's really good. I combine this with the later one where they rip the banner and jump down it. Oh, that one's awesome. What are you I, talking about? Was I, it on the motorcycle? No, the motorcycle's all right. The The beginning shootout part is meh. The best car chase in this is the remote control one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's top tier. Yeah, no, but this, like, the Brazen era, I think, has the best action of the series so far. Yeah, it has good shootouts. Yeah, I think the only film that rivals it is Honor, Majesty, Secret Service, and the third act of Spy Who Loved Me, which is crazy to me to think that like Roger mm. Moore is literally in the upper echelon for action sequences. Yeah. Um. He so there's mm. a the, the the one thing of note to say is like Waylon. He sees Waylon there. They run into each other, and like, but they're not working together. And he's just like, "Who? What the fuck?" Yeah. He's like, so okay. A newscaster? Yeah. And then um, he throws some dude into the uh, the, the newspaper. The printing press. Yeah, the printing press. And he's just like, oh, they'll print anything these days. And there's like blood yeah. coming out. I love I, it. I don't know. Yeah. I think this is pretty boring. This whole part with the printer. 
I liked it. I think it's all right. It's the shootout part at the beginning. You're right. I was like, oh, actually, maybe I'm combining this with the later one. But no, I think this one's all right. I, I would, like it. I would put this in the middle. It's just like, like I, think I, I think it's boring when you're watching it without sound. <laughs> That's a good point. But when it when you have like the and you have the, it's pretty pretty exciting. Yeah, that's probably true. Because <laughs> they have finally discovered a couple of movies ago how to use the Bond theme. Yeah, like Timothy <laughs> Dalton was the first one to like push it a little bit more. And then Brosnan was just like, how about we just do it all the time? Yeah, it's It would be pretty easy to just like mix it into everything, huh? Like it's not, not that crazy. <laughs> I think you could have opened the can. It would have been fine. Uh, no, I did a fine job. Don't worry. <laughs> Bond thinks he's out of it, but when people start shooting at him, he's like, "Jesus fucking!" I I do like that. It 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 makes it like he got away, and he's going through the basement of the building, and there's just people working, not paying him any mind. And he's like, "Oh hey, yeah, must not have got the silent alarm." Yeah, he jumps on like a cart, and he fucking rolls his way into a thing, almost gets killed by a fucking uh, forklift, and then he roll he bangs himself onto the ground and rolls before like the the, yeah it looks so good i don't even think it's moving i just think he's in a rush (laughs) it looks that looks sick yeah the the stunts in this the stunt doubles are great Mm -hmm. he uh gets he gets a call he gets his car he starts driving gets a call from carver and carver's like yeah two things of mine uh my wife and my decoder Mm -hmm. i like my decoder back please because my wife is dead and he's like what and bong goes back to the hotel and stamper's like yeah he's uh he's pulling the thing and Bond goes in, he locks his car, leaves the decoder in the car, and goes to see that Paris is dead. Well, he hears it on the news. He's like, he goes into the hotel, it looks mm-hmm. fucking fantastic, and then he hears, oh, like, yeah. Paris car found dead in a hotel under, under mysterious circumstances, yep. and he sees her laying on the bed, just gone. It's so good. It shot really well. The reveal is great. Mm-hmm. And then you have, um, oh, this, he's a great character actor. He's in so many great movies. He's in, like, Ghost. He's in um, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. He's in every Milo Foreman film. He's he's mm-hmm. a he's a great character actor, but I can't remember his name, but he, he plays the character... Dr. Kemper, and he's like, hello, Mr. Bond. It's uh, Vincent Schiavonelli. Nice. Whatever. Close enough. It's a, it's an, oh, he's also in Batman Returns. He's in Fast <laughs> Times at Ridgemont High. He's in a lot of great movies. Um, he goes, he's like, hello, Mr. Bond. It's, that's good. That's That news broadcast is going to be for tomorrow night, blah, blah, blah. He's like, and then Bond says, tomorrow's news today, huh? Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's a good one. And he, they have a conversation. You find out this guy's a world renowned assassin in that he is a professional. He's, he's very sought after, you mm-hmm. know, while, and then they cut away to them trying to get into Bond's car and they're hitting with sledgehammers and nothing's working. They can't mm-hmm. get in. We go back to him and he's just like, yeah, I'm very well known for doing the celebrity overdose and doing all these other things. And Bond's like, if you shoot me from there, it will not look like a suicide. He's like, but I could shoot you from Eastern Blue, and I would still look, do the desired effect. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's wonderful. And then, and Mark really does the accent just like him. Oh yeah, it's definitely not awesome. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he he goes, and then he's like, goodbye, Mister Bond. Ah, stop, stop getting in my ear. Yeah, it's... and he's just like. They're like, we can't get into his car. You need, you need to unlock the door. You need to unlock the doors. He's like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. He's like, okay, I'll, 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 I'll ask. I'll ask. He's like, I'm so embarrassed. This is so embarrassing. But they need to get to keys. Do you have something very important in your car? And they need the keys to get in. <laughs> and it's it's pretty funny. He It's definitely mega campy. But I was fine with it. Oh yeah, it's so it, it's 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 something. It's perfect to like lighten up the tone of like the the despair of him, of Paris or Sylvia Trench dying. Yeah, uh, literally still on screen mm-hmm. her corpse, and he's making jokes. Dude, Terry Hatcher deserves to perform uh, an Oscar for this for not laughing while this guy is going. I feel like such an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty good. Yeah, and then Bond's like, "Oh, all right, you just do it." And he grabs the phone. Ah, da, da, da. I'll I'll do it. Yeah. And he grabs the phone. He's like, and Bond tells him like, re- "Redial three, send." And then it shoots electricity. And then Bond grabs him by the hand. 
and pushes the gun towards the goose face. He's like, wait, I'm just a professional doing a job. And Mon looks him dead in the eyes. So do I. Boom. Yeah. Ah. Oh! It's pretty crazy. <laughs> this movie's amazing. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's annoying because I really like the funny parts with him. And I really like his death, but I feel like they're very weird immediately next to each other. <laughs> like, and I, there's no other way to do it, but I, cause I still want the funny parts cause he, it is really well acted. Yeah. I enjoy it a lot, but I kind of wish that this whole thing was just super intense. I almost I, wish it wasn't broken up with being funny. I like that it's broken up being funny. Don't you hate that about the Marvel movies? Yeah, but the thing about the Marvel movies is they're not funny. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, this is genuinely I, funny. I hate that they do s- the seven minute, we're doing something serious, and then it's a joke immediately after. Yeah, oh, I hate it when they're in the middle of something, and then they... Like his dead girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, but we're, we, that's that's par for the chorus at this point. <laughs> I if It was trench like you want it to be. I would still be like, dude, Trench, as much as I love the idea of it being Trench, I don't have a lot of fucking nostalgia for Sylvia <laughs> Trench. Sylvia Trench did three things. Uh, I admire your luck, mister, and then had sex with them. Yeah. And then the next time was, like, I haven't seen you in months, and then had sex with them. Mm-hmm. So That's it's not love. like she's like this. Like she's not, it's not like it's fucking Tracy. It's not like I need yeah. the big, the big, the big hoo ha. What did Tracy do? She's in one movie. <laughs> yeah, but she's in the whole movie. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> like this one, they they do they like they play around with the atmosphere. You know. I don't know. I think it's. I think it works. I don't think they do the Marvel thing where it's just goofy to be goofy. I think it's it's kind of disturbing how goofy this guy is and how he's like really. This like renowned hitman. Yeah, I, I guess it's not super shot for comedy. It's just straight. Yeah, There's it's no just like this guy funny is sound hilarious. effect or anything. It's no, just... I guess I don't know because the yelling in the earpiece. Maybe if it wasn't yelling in the earpiece, maybe that's what takes me out of it. Maybe if it was just the car thing, I'd be more okay. It with doesn't it. take me out of it at all. I don't know, man. I just I'm hard disagreeing with you on this one. That's okay. I feel like I feel like this has the. We goof- don't hard disagree enough. I feel like this one has the the goofiness is in more of a Spider Man thing rather than a mm. MCU thing. It has more of the goofiness of a Raimi thing where it's just like you'll have Willem Dafoe being like, ah! but then he'll like kill Aunt May or something, you know, or like mm. he'll like kill like he'll like drop Kristen Dunst to her death. Like that's the yeah. kind of goofiness that we have in this scene. So I think it works. They're balancing the two tones because it's like while it's like a, a depressing moment, it's also a fun action movie. Mm. My problem is I don't want fun action movie. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Which comes up in every episode. <laughs> yeah, you want you want him to cry every two seconds. That's why your yeah. favorite Daniel Craig. That's you it's it's weirdo. weird that I want this like more not campy and fun stuff and then it ends up by like Craig. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. It's, we don't have to agree on it. Yeah. They also they use uh, the wrong amount of missiles now that I've seen all of them. He has more missiles than he ends up using and it shows it empty at the end. Oh yeah, this is the deleted scene. The scene was much longer. Oh, ah, okay. So Bond escapes, he gets he gets into his car. Oh yeah, we haven't even got to the <laughs> the, car the remote control car chase that's going on. He for well, he shows up to the car, the parking garage, and he makes the car move. He shoots the, the smoke. He jumps in as the as the as he rolls down the window, and he's in the back seat the entire time, remote controlling it. And it's the one of the best car chases in the series so far. Yeah, this is uh, super cool. Yeah, this is way better than the the motorcycle one lady. Yeah, um, he it, it's it's. It's great. He's using every gadget in the book. He's dropping down fucking um, like spikes, mm-hmm. popping tires. He's shooting yeah, missiles yeah. out of the car. They're showing the gadgets right too, and I like that it cuts back and forth between the actual action, uh, the car with no driver in it, and then him like just playing on a cell phone in the back. Like, there's a a great shot that they just showed, which I wish they would used a little bit more, where the camera is just like right on the the side of the car and it's yeah. just looking at him like crammed in the corner like hiding just 
playing on his Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's a great there's a great bit where he goes where they close the 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 door on him and he shoots a missile at it and he thinks he's gonna go in there and then the smoke clears and he sees that it's not open it didn't yeah. blow and he's like oh. <laughs> and then he runs over the spikes himself but then he like uses a button to make his mm-hmm. tires the reinflate tires reinflate yeah. it's it's dude it's it's fantastic everything mm. everything they throw at him he's got a he's got a thing that's it I love I loved all of it except for. Uh, the part that's about to come up with the the chain cutter emblem thing, that's the only gadget that I'm like, it's so specific to this one. It has to be the perfect height for it. Just cut the top off the car and have it dodge him because he's laying down. Yeah, like the car gets totaled anyways. <laughs> like I don't know why they didn't cut it. I guess just to have another gadget. Yeah, because it's the nineties. Mm-hmm. And he jumps out of the car, and he makes the car go off the building and lands into a rental car place, <laughs> which is funny. He returned it. Mm-hmm. It's on time. Full tank of gas. Yeah. <laughs> Not. He, I don't think it's totally he, destroyed, honestly. He, he left it in better condition than Johnny Knoxville did in Jackass 1. <laughs> um, and he ends up leaving, and... Um, yeah, it, it doesn't he show goes, him leaving, but he probably just took the stairs. <laughs> yeah, he goes and meets up with Jack Wade, CIA. Yeah. Oh, he's back. He's always, hey, Jumbo. Yeah, there's, I was like, oh, is Felix? Because I, I I, think I looked down on my phone for a second, but I thought I saw it say US base, and I was like, oh, is Felix coming? And I looked at Mark, and Mark points at the TV, and I was like, oh, it's Wade. <laughs> I yeah. was like, hello again. <laughs> yeah. And Wade, there's a great bit where he's just like, where Bond shows this other SDIA guy, like, that's the fucking encoder we're missing. How the fuck yeah. do you have that? And he's just like, can this decoder uh, do what it did? Do, like, show like sh- like show where it was last done? He's like, well, blah, blah, blah. He's like, and the guy asks Bond a question, and Jack White's like, hey, I didn't ask Jimbo. I don't think Jimbo asked you like <laughs> asked you that, did he? How would you answer the man's question? Hey, he goes, oh, does this have to do with the ship? Yeah. <laughs> Wade's like, shut up. Yeah. He's like, do you he know how this works? <laughs> I don't remember him mentioning a ship. Did, did do you? Yeah. <laughs> is I like, your first I did, time working with other spies. I, I just like that Wade is more loyalty to Bond than he does the American government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Uh, it's coming up, too. but uh, he confirms that the encoder that Bond has that the bad guys were using is like seventy miles off to the side. So. We now have the coordinates that we can find the sunken ship at, mm-hmm. and we get. Uh, I really like the scene of. Uh, <laughs> he goes, "Hey, can you give me a rad?" Yeah, and they uh, he goes to Vietnam, right? Yes, they're because the ship was sunk off Vietnam. Yeah, so he's gonna halo jump and then jump. Uh, it's a high altitude one, so you need a. Um, oxygen tank and everything to jump and I get I want to talk about the really funny joke with Wade uh, they're talking to I think what is it just another CIA guy you think yeah yeah and he's like is there anything on Bond that would like lead him to be American that the Vietnamese catch him and he's like oh yeah just the the parachute the wetsuit <laughs> sneakers <laughs> like they just list Slippers, off everything, everything. Yeah. the American flag that's on his back <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> And, uh, and they're like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> yeah. hope he doesn't get picked up with fucking Vietnamese. Yeah. They're like, uh, ooh. And as this happens, Bond jumps out of the plane, and then Wade's like, <laughs> he didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. What an asshole. And that's the last time we see Jack Wade CIA. So, mm. Nick, I have to ask you a very important question. <laughs> Jack Wade versus Felix later. I... Only... From the Felix that we have seen, the Felixes we've seen in this these, this franchise, not the books, just oh, I so I still like um, is Lord the first one? Jack Lord, yeah, yeah, I still think he's the best one. I agree, but this is probably my second favorite. Like, like I because I I think Jack Wade blows away all the other Felixes. Oh yeah, they because it's where even Nutter. Yeah, I think he's better than Nutter. I think his part's cooler. Because it, cause it's not like Felix, it's like kind of a comedic rewrite of Felix. Yeah. Which I think this is like appropriate comedy. Like I think this is where the comedy should be versus with the doctor in front of a corpse. <laughs> but like I I still get your side of it. Uh, and I'm trying to think of the other allies that I like really liked. Because I, I don't want to say he's like the best ally 
but he's definitely better than most of the Felixes. Yeah, I mean, he's no Quarrel. <laughs> or Quarrel Jr. Or, he's not, he's or not... Sharky. Or is we like to just call them Quarrel? Yeah, or uh, what's his name? Oh, my God. Carrion Bay from from Russia with Love. Oh, yeah. Oh. And they, these are like... Saunders from Living Daylights. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a lot of good henchmen. This is how can, how can we forget Luigi? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, it's it's such a, he had such an impression on me. He did. <laughs> I, I don't know how he slipped my mind. Yeah, how'd you forget Luigi? <laughs> okay. Or AJ from uh, I have no VJ, idea who AJ is. or whatever his name was from fucking Octopussy, the tennis one. The tennis, the other, the oh one. my god, I hated him so much. <laughs> that was so stupid. <laughs> I appreciate the attempt at trying to loop in famous people to like see if they're all right, but man, that was bad. Mm. But uh, the uh, yeah, I think Wade's up there. He's good. Yeah. Oh, what was his name from A View to a Kill? <laughs> no, no, the, the, the guy move my bags, uh, and he's like, "Yes, sir." Oh shit, you're right. He That's really so good. good. He's he might be better than Wade, actually. Yeah. Except he doesn't look in the back seat. Yeah, he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. He would have looked in the back seat. Yeah. Oh man, and Wade would have had a sledgehammer. No, oh, you're so right. And the, I think you like Wade a lot because he plays into the peppers. <laughs> Like he 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 gets that like comedy undercut really well, well. You were saying that he's he's the best of what we both want. You want Felix. I <laughs> want Pepper. It was funny because I if I was just watching these movies on my own, I probably wouldn't like Wade that much. But I know when we're talking about it, <laughs> my friend over here is gonna go, man. If only Peppers was in here, <laughs> and I'm gonna have to go. I don't want him in these movies. But and you do. This is like the happy medium. <laughs> You do, I know. I have to write down. Sheriff G.W. Pepper is the best ally. Yeah, you're right. (laughs) What was it? No, who was the... Oh, we just talked about him. AJ or whatever? What do we think his name is? VJ? I'm going to write down AJ. (laughs) Why? Because I want to... In my top five, he's definitely up there. You just said you hated him. No, oh, not AJ. Sorry. The Vito Kelga. Oh, we we couldn't figure out his name. Okay. Okay, it's in my notes. I okay. won't forget him now. I was like, I, I literally, literally just shit on the guy. And you're just like, oh, he's oh, my top no. five. Yeah, no, he was terrible. Um, Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I can't. I'm just recapping in my head the whole race, the whole chase scene where he just has like tennis puns with his racket the whole time. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what is this? <laughs> Bad. Um, Bond goes into the ship, the sunken ship that the. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that Halo jump was to get to. Yeah, and who's in there but fucking Waylon? Yeah. And uh, they go up, and they're like, oh, I guess we're working together now. And they're... How would she have any idea where this is? She would have no idea. So they go up, and... <laughs> um, this is all the same day still, too, which is weird. <laughs> Nick. They really did write this the same day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, they uncover each other down there. Yeah, uh, all right. They flow to the top. <laughs> yeah, they, they get out of the ship. All right, god damn it. At first, it starts like it's going to be an attack, which I was like, who the fuck is down here? And then yeah. it was her. I was like, oh, this is actually kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, she goes up, and she sees uh, her boat has been manned by, now by Stamper and his crew, and they bring Waylon and Bond to Carver, and Carver is like, mm-hmm. "My evil scheme is I create the news." <laughs> and Bond is like, "You're a madman," and he's like, "No, Mister Bond, I am a news broadcaster." <laughs> <laughs> That's not the dialogue, but it's, it, <laughs> it's it, it very well could have been. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, <laughs> wait, it wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, we have some nice little banter between Waylon and Bond on the way there. By the way, yeah, but, in the yeah, I I suppose I'm trying to defend her more against myself. I like I like yeah, Waylon. I almost wish because I think it's just like in every movie, 
it's like, oh, they're in love. So I'm like, okay, they're going to fall in love. But if they just played it as friends, this is like great. They have like a good friend connection. They I think. kind of play it more like that. Like, yeah, they, they, they sometimes. They, and I like. I also I like to tell myself that it's like that adrenaline of after a mission. It's like you want to just bang now. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that makes total sense. Nick, it's like me and you after every set. Where you yeah, have to, after we every start, podcast. As soon as we wrap, as soon as we wrap up uh, 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 on a film, we just start having sex. Yeah. <laughs> set wrap. All right, let's go. The set rap orgy. <laughs> um, <laughs> the <laughs> it's too much backstage for people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, Carver Carver also is like, yeah, Doctor Kemper. I know it's unfortunate you killed him because yeah, in Samba's he was like a father to me. Yeah. And it's like okay, Stamper, why don't you still? Why don't you grow personality? Uh, <laughs> And basically, he's like, we're going to ha- do these things on you that will inflict pain, mm-hmm. the maximum amount of pain, and still keep you alive. Yeah, it's. It, I don't really understand how it had anything to do with the chakras, but he was like, there's seven major organs that the chakras line up with, and we're going to uh, torture all of them mm-hmm. for like 50 hours or something. He said, he said Dr. Kemper's record was 58 hours, and, and Stamper's like, I plan on breaking it. Yeah. He he talks like Mark did something with his face when he said that, and it's spot on. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know why he does it, but it's because he's probably not a great actor. <laughs> oh no! How dare you? No, oh, probably controversial opinion. <laughs> That's the worst Grant you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, he's the worst Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um. Bond then has a big quip about that where he's like, well, I thought watching your te- television program was torture enough. Oh, the, which is like, it's pretty good. Kill him. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this guy. He says, like, uh, do his heart last so you could take it out in front of him or something. Yeah. He's like, oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah. And then Bond and Waylon uh, grab, you know, start chaos. They grab guns and they start shooting. Mm-hmm. And uh, they jump out of the window or and then they land and they're like if we just tie ourselves to the the banner the banner there's, there's like an eight story banner of Elliot's face on the side of his building because mm-hmm. uh, I which looking back I'm glad that we set up that he likes to put giant pictures of himself everywhere because yeah. it pays off now <laughs> Nick was bitching the whole first act of the film being like I don't get why this guy is fucking pictures. I yeah I just a lot of the set design I hated which you also said I. When we were in that the network room where he does the first thing, I was like, "The set's kind of ugly." And you're like, yeah. "Yeah, I think the set is ugly. I don't think it the has a bad is logo a too. The, the, I think the, it it doesn't add anything to the, it. The Carver logo. No, I think it does add. It adds to. I think. Are the, you upset that there aren't a ton in this room there and right now? Because it's also one of his headquarters. A little bit. <laughs> okay, as long as you're constant. <laughs> Yeah, I think because he's such an egotist that he would just have pictures of himself. Yeah. I feel like his his ba- like his his main base would be a wall of mirrors. Mm. Like that's just the kind yeah. of guy that he is. Is it? It's like they discovered the TV. In yeah. This one now that I think of it, because there are TVs everywhere in this. Mm-hmm. I the, think I don't I, like this set either if, of the Chinese office. If I was to design his his office here, it would be the entire room would be mirrors because it would feed into hit one his ego and two mm. the idea that he needs to know everything that's going on all the time. That's I was gonna say I don't even think he's like that about himself. Like I, it's it's weird because I feel like he's, but he is. What other? Yeah, what other? But not about him. Is yeah, like, he is. It's like he just wants to be the number one guy. It's not like he's like, man, like. But if you're not all about yourself, why would you want to be the number one guy? Well, I mean, I want to be the best in my job, but like, I'm not gonna hang a picture of myself next to my desk. I don't know. I think. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Yeah. I gotta think of because I'm trying to think of good examples of. I'm trying to loop in him killing his wife into it for him, but it kind of defends that he would be like, oh, nobody else can. You can't like anybody else. Die. Yeah. It it, it makes sense. But it's... I feel like he killed her because she betrayed him, not because of that. I think it's probably a bit of both. I'm going too deep in my own head lore yeah. is the problem. <laughs> they jump off the banner and then they break into- <laughs> Which is stupid. No, it's not. I think it's pretty dumb. 
You don't like the silliness. I that's been established. I think it's all right, but like, I'm glad it didn't go perfectly to the bottom. I guess. I guess that would make me want to die. <laughs> I I think the silliness works in this movie. I don't know. I I think some of the silliness they're fucking handcuffed together. I think that works perfectly. Yeah, for but, an entire like what ten minutes probably. Yeah, they 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 get on a motorcycle together and they 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 have to like co-pilot the motorcycle, which I like yeah. a lot. Um, it works really well too. They yeah. get creative with it. It's a very creative little chase scene, and yeah, this one's good. It ends with a great moment where they're they do go head on into a helicopter and they slide right under the propeller, and then they throw this this like line onto one of the wings mm-hmm. or one of the uh, like the back yeah propeller. onto like the rotor and uh, it, it, it it destroys the, the, the helicopter. It's a yeah, very yeah. creative way of doing it. And yeah, I think this is a, it's a good, I think it's a pretty damn good chase scene. Yeah. I like the chase scene. I didn't really like the helicopter stuff, but it's just cause it gives me like twilight zone flashbacks. Whenever I see a helicopter, not flying perfectly straight <laughs> when it's like purposely aiming the propeller into a crowd. Mm-hmm. I'm always like, uh, <laughs> This makes me feel weird. Yeah. No fault of the movie. Because I think it's a cool idea. But, like, they could just have, like, a gun on the side shooting at them. <laughs> yeah, but Mission of, Impossible came out the year prior, so we needed to outdo that. <laughs> Which, it, it looks all right. Now that I'm thinking back and they have, it's, like, slowly moving through a crowd in the scene coming up with the helicopter where its blades are tilted forward. I wonder if it was just like mowing down <laughs> civilians or yeah. if like everybody gets out of the way. I'll have to look closer. The So after that, they end up taking a shower together and Bond's like, we should work together. And she's like, I don't really think so. And she unho- like she takes her earring off and it's like a lock pick and she gets free and she handcuffs Bond to a pole mm. and Bond rips the pole off. Yeah. In like once it's like a water pipe that's barely attached, and the whole time there's a naked baby, which instantly I was like, why? Why is there just a naked baby right there? Yeah. And then she steals the naked baby's clothes. <laughs> it's like a shirt hanging up that she grabs. Yeah. And she goes off on her own into some building, then Bond can't find her. But then he sees that the Russian military, and uh, not Russian, Chinese. Uh, Chinese. Sorry, it's not the eighties anymore. Uh, <laughs> the Cold War's over. Yeah, the Cold War's ended. Um, the they 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 attack her and he they they start fighting her and she fights back and uh, Bond ends up punching some dude, a couple mm. dudes and gets in yeah, there and he, def- he he saves the day yeah right at they, the end and that's when they agree to work with each other and she's like we thought that Elliot was just creating a stealth boat or a stealth pellet plane but it's way more than that blah 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 and they kind of catch each other up to what they were both looking for mm-hmm. you know and. Bond is also gets a new gun for the first time. No longer are we having the Walter PPK. Now we have the Walter P ninety nine, and we then and she he also we also have a bunch of gags here where uh, we, she has one of his old watches. Yeah, that they've improved. Watch. Yeah, they also. This is good time for comedy. Yeah, he also grabs like a dragon that shoots fire and he's ah yeah. cute novel. It's novel. Yeah, they. I, I like the. The little scenes like that. It's yeah. Like, oh, we'll give people something to laugh at while they talk about. Uh, viewer already knows stuff, but catching them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, then I think they go right into the climax, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where if we only have 48 hours. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. The I'm pretty sure, and I... I think it's mentioned in passing that the British are already moving there. They're still moving their armada uh, to the So is the Chinese government. Yeah, the Chinese government's also like, hey, you can't stop. Why are you coming here? Because uh, kind of big deal when you move your naval power right next to a different country. <laughs> yeah. They sneak aboard Elliot's boat, like, ship, Mm-hmm. And basically, he's going to film the war starting. Uh, they think they kill Bond at one point. Yeah, which and... is pretty cool. I liked it a lot. Yeah, he uh, he kind of hits a dude and hides in a doorway, and then kind of pushes the guy out a little bit. They shoot at him, and he throws him in the water. And they go, oh, "I just killed Bond." <laughs> 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 it's sweet. <laughs> 
dude, everybody makes us seem so hard. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. He's like not invincible or something. Yeah, it's a great it's a great moment. And uh and this also just shows how stupid Stamper is. Yeah. Like I don't even think the bullets hit that dead body. <laughs> Um, was, oh, I thought I missed all those shots, but I hit them. Yeah. Dude, I'm that fucking good? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, and they catch... Um, Wayland. Wayland, yeah. Yeah, and then they're, you know, they're just doing vil- villain shit. They're talking you know, explaining about the things. The, Bond's the doing plot. his thing where he's like, all right, I got to get that guy, that guy, and that guy. Yeah, sneaky, sneaky. Yep, and uh, he ends up grabbing Gupta and puts a gun yeah. to him, and he's he, just like... Before he does that, he does a cool... He makes a little gadget almost. He takes part of the watch that's like a little detonator and puts it in a little cup, like a glass cup, and puts a grenade in it. Pulls a pin on the grenade, but the cup is tight enough that it holds the handle down. So uh, he's got a backup plan. But then he takes Koopa. Yeah, he takes Koopa, and he's like, uh, Carver, I got your guy. And uh, blah, blah, blah. And Carver's just like, okay, send someone send, send, send to kill Bond from behind. And there's a guy walking behind there, monologuing each other. And uh, Bond then has like has a machine gun as the hand just shoots up and yeah. kills the other guy. And then Nukar's like, "Fuck, he's got two guns! <laughs> what the fuck?" God. Of course. How he is acts, he? He acts like if he took his gun off of Gupta for one second to shoot the other guy, that he would have time to do literally anything. Yeah. Also, there's also, I should point out, there was a part where Alia Carver does, like, weird, like, Bruce Lee things at Waylon, and it's really awkward. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. What is this, licorice <laughs> pizza? Pedophilia? No, because everyone's <laughs> saying licorice pizza's racist because of the, the guy who's married oh. the, the, jet, like the Chinese woman. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. I don't think it's the, the best jokes i've heard but yeah the um they then go on and well basically he's like i'm not gonna kill like she's like why won't you just kill gupta bond like and let me die and she's like we're, we're finishing this one together mm-hmm. and they end up um well like Harvey's like hey gupta is like the thing done and he's like yeah and he's like oh cool and he shoots Gupta, and Gupta's like, oh, fuck. Why'd you tell him it was ready? Yeah. He's like, all you have to do is hit the big red button, sir. And he's like, okay, die. Yep, and then Bond makes the grenade blow up, which also alerts the British and Chinese military, like, what's, uh, what's yeah. going on over there? Oh, we yeah. missed a plot point. <gasps> General something with the Chinese government is working with oh, Car- yeah. Carver. Oh, <laughs> yeah. General Shen or something, I think. Yeah, General Chang, something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it was Chang. But uh, Chang. Oh, I thought you were making a joke about the restaurant. No. <laughs> the um. Yes, yeah, so there's one general oh, who yeah, wants yeah. to work with Carver and get the Chinese government to get the. You know, it's 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 he it's, he must be bought out or something because it doesn't make sense why he would want this tv network in yeah, china it's very very convoluted and yeah not great. that that part's not that great yeah but i just remembered it now so yeah because it's it's literally that not important. <laughs> yeah the only time it was really important was that the chinese military attacked Waylon. that mm-hmm. was it and um, the another good thing we should say is that they told both the chinese and british government yeah. That they think there's a stealth boat that's doing everything. So everyone knows now. They're just kind of, they don't believe it yet. <laughs> yeah. Also, the moment when Bond first gets Gupta is so good because Carver's talking to Gupta and then Bond's on the radio. He's like, actually, it's me. Yeah. And he's like, oh, what the fuck? Um, Fake Grant, you didn't kill him. <laughs> yeah. And they, so he blows a hole into the, the, um, the, the stealth boat when everyone's like, Huh, what's that? Yeah, let's shoot at that. And yeah, yeah the British go, hey, <laughs> hold on, Chinese, don't shoot at us yet. What's that thing? And then the Chinese send a letter back saying, well, a, a radio. <laughs> and it's not a fucking telegram or anything. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> he, they send him a radio thing saying, hey, yeah, we see that too. Go for it. Like, good luck hunting. We're not going to try to attack it. And then they start busting it they shoot a flare so they can see it first but then they start 
Uh, it can't because it's still so stealthy. It can't lock on with a missile, so they just start shooting the cannons at it. Yeah, and it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, we have a nice action sequence where Bond is just shooting people on this on this like sub, mm-hmm. and it looks awesome. And uh, him and Waylon are kicking ass. But yeah, Waylon Stamper... goes to the engine room. Yep. So they they kind of split up. Yeah. And what does she do in the engine room again? She fucking... I, she's trying to get the boat to stop. Yeah. Which works. And then... And then she gets caught. Yeah, Stamper catches her there. He, throw, he, he throws her onto this, like, chain. It drops to the yeah. end of the underwater. But... Uh, she people, can't climb it, so she just drowns. Yeah. And Bond and Stamper fight while the British are about to shoot the missile at the thing. And <laughs> it's locked on, but Bond breaks Stamper's foot. He also stabs Stamper twice and it has no effect on the man. Yeah, Stamper's foot is broken because it's hit with the cruiser missile that they're planning on shooting. Mm-hmm. It slams into his leg and it's stuck between like the wall of the cage and the missile. Mm. Oh, right before that, Bond kills Carver. Oh my god. Right before that. Like this yeah. is packed. Um, That's a, yeah, this is a, a quick 15. <laughs> Yeah, Bond grabs Carver. Carver has Bond ready, like to to die, and Bond's covered in blood, and uh, really breaking up up that that stereotype of Pierce Brosnan is the cute one. Mm. And he's so he's like, but Bond has the override button that shoots the that has the uh, that miss that missile with the yeah. blades on it come towards it's like them. The, the chewing one, yeah. And Carver gets distracted. Bond holds him there, and he's like, "You forgot the one thing about network television is give the people what they want." And then he, right before it's about to hit him, Bond lets go and go, go, jumps to the side. So then Carver just dies. I would have preferred he throw him in there. But yeah, I, w- I think we both agreed that he should have thrown him in. Mm-hmm. Would have looked a lot cooler. Yeah. Then but what are you gonna do? So then we're back with Stamper. So Stamper's foot's broken, and. Uh, he Bond ends up. He throws Bond over the thing. He's like, "No, I'm not gonna let you get away. You're not gonna die that easy." And Bond's like unzipping his thing, and it won't get stuck. So he takes the knife out of Stamper's chest, and he cuts it off, and he mm-hmm. falls into the thing. And Stamper's like, "Oh fuck!" <sighs> and then let the the missile turns on and burns his foot like yeah. off. And then the it entire sick. the entire thing blows up. And then Bond kisses blows air into Wailing's mouth and mm-hmm. underwater, so they're not affected by. The fires mm-hmm. above from the boat. And the day is saved. And then they have sex. Yeah. And that's the film. And the boat looks for them and they the recovery mission is solely a dude yelling off the boat going, Yo Bond, you up there And they just sail past <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he'll yeah, just show up again probably. <laughs> yeah. I like this movie a lot. Yeah, it's pretty good. So let's do our oh, yeah. our thing, Nick. Nick just was like, oh, I forgot about the, the format of the show. Yeah. Well, I, I like to wait to see what you think is first without me influencing it. It's the pre-title sequence. Yeah. Now he knows. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. The pre-title sequence on this one's like a five easy. Five. All I, I love that it's it solves a mission that he's on, but yeah. it slightly involves the main storyline. Mm-hmm. Ah, it's great. I I really like... You, I pretty much love it when Bond is in the snow. Bond in the snow is usually... Andy like, didn't ski. Yeah. I think Bond in the snow is usually a great combination outside of View to a Kill. Mm. You know, when they're like, oh, East Coast girls are hip. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. Uh, I love I love it. I think some of the I think it's some of the I I think this this movie has some of the best action in the entire series. Like I think like if we're talking just pure action in um, in Bond movies, I'd probably mm. say like number one is Goldeneye. Like so far, Goldeneye, Honor, Majesty, this from Russia with Love, and then maybe Sp- Spy. Yeah. Spy is a good final scene. I'm saying action throughout the entire film. Oh, not just one action piece? Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably. Then this movie's good. I was going to say, because I... It, I should say is very high up there. I was going to say, because some of them I really like. But some movies, I think, have one scene that's better than the scenes in this. Yeah. But it's only that one scene. So, like, it's not... 
Yeah. It I'm, can't carry the entire movie versus a, a movie like this that has good action the whole time. Yeah, like the pre title sequence action scene is like is Oh so good. Is so is is this is this is astounding. It's yeah. incredible. Uh I think that I think Bros and I think I, in my from my memory has the best consistent pre title sequences. I really like him. I think he has the best gun barrel. Yeah. Um, and then the the I, I love the song "Tomorrow Never Dies" by Sheryl Crow. Mm-hmm. I think that's who sings it. Uh, Doesn't even know the artist. I don't. I just know the song. I know Sheryl Crow sings one. So I'll, then this is the one. Yeah. <laughs> I believe uh, you. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was all right. I wouldn't actively search this one out to listen to. This was one I used to listen to when I was a kid. So mm. I have a lot of nostalgia of like being in my room with the CD thing. Into the day. <laughs> You know, I can um, picture little Mark doing that too, mm-hmm. with his little leather jacket. <laughs> uh, Bond's next. Bond five five. It's easy. He's so good. So now I have to ask Nick. It's too early, but he is really good. I still don't. I think he's well. Now we're we're, we're two and two now. So Dalton yeah. Dalton had two. Brosnan has had two. I think he's better than Dalton. Ah, yeah. Yes. I really, I still really like Dalton, but I think he is actually better. Yeah, because uh, he, uh, I don't think he's better than George though. I know you are on the fence about it, but no, I think I think he is. Yeah, the I think he did brutal really well in this one though, mm-hmm. with uh, killing the doctor and then killing uh, Elliot. Yeah, they're good. Oh, it's it's pretty bad. Just uh, uh, Elliot just died on screen, and Bond literally watches the whole time too. He doesn't even just like leave. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Uh, I yeah, you know, I, I I think I've said this before. Number one for me will always it'll alternate. Depends on which movie I'm watching. If I'm watching Th- Thunderball or For Much Love or Doctor No, I'll probably say, "Oh, Connery was always the best Bond." It's it's, yeah. it's not even a competition. But if I'm watching Goldeneye, Tomorrow Never Dies, or Was Enough, I'm like, "Oh, Pierce Brosnan is the best Bond." It's, yeah. it's, it's no question about it. So I just it literally depends on what movie I had yeah. just most That's, recently it's, watched. It's hard with these because again, like we've talked about it a couple times, it's like they're all good. So they're not all good. They're not all good. Most of the stuff in the series, I think, is pretty good. Yeah, on average. And then it's like, oh damn, like I don't know who I like the most because I like. Stuff that all of them did. Yeah, I like. I think I think like one and two is interchangeable for Brosnan and Connery, mm-hmm. whereas three, I think I go Lazenby, and then four I go Dalton, which feels awkward because I love Dalton so much. Yeah, that's that's how I am too. But for me, I think it's Sean and Dalton are changed around, and because they're both so good, and I'm like, damn, I don't, I don't want either of you to be four. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it's it's weird. Like, two, three, and four are just all so close for me that I'm like, oh, my God, what is happening? Yeah. Um, I, you know, and then you can have anybody, and then, and then the last two will always be Daniel Craig and... Oh, yeah, I forgot about Roger Craig. Moore. Yeah, and, I, I'll have to see Craig, but I think Craig's pretty far down now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, Brosnan gets a five here. He's phenomenal. Uh, I think he's almost better than he was in Gold in GoldenEye, and GoldenEye is one of the best Bond performances, so mm. it's like, that's how good this guy is. Yeah, I believed he was upset, and I think that's my problem is like, oh, I believe you're so upset, but why are you so upset? <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, Paris, is that important to you? <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay, but damn, it's so good. Yeah. Uh, next <sighs> is what? Bond Girl? Mm-hmm. Waylon and Paris. So Paris, I'm going to give a solid three and a half. Mm. I was thinking if, like... If you change your name to Sylvia Trench, four, four. Five. I think like two and a half to three. I'm not a, a huge fan of Paris. Like you said, she almost does nothing. She tells mm-hmm. him an entrance and dies. Yeah. And then 
I just, I like uh, her dialogue with Bond. Yeah, her dialogue stuff's great. Yeah. And I like I like the idea that she's willing to betray her husband once she knows that Bond is like looking into him. He's like, yeah, that means this guy's probably fucked up. Yeah, that's I like I like your idea of her being like, ooh, my guy's a villain, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then with Waylon, I'm I'm gonna give her a four. I like Waylon. Eh, I think Waylon was great. Like, and, yeah, they have no romance. Yeah, but like, I don't think the chemistry's there or anything, but I think the friendship's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Bond villain is next, I believe. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Q. MI6. MI6. Um, M was phenomenal. Yep. I liked her. Four stars. Her sass with, uh. The Admiral. Yeah. I didn't like her, um, third wheeling Money Penny and Bond. That, that was, was weird. Awkward. Yeah. That feel felt like it should have been two separate scenes but they're like let's just shoot them together mm-hmm. uh but i thought it was great same thing with money penny i think it was pretty good yeah and i then, still like her relationship with bond yeah well, q's relationship that's where the money is q five stars yeah, as always yeah like there's f- recently i should say yeah so good money penny i'd probably give a solid four yeah, I think I was MI6 like was, was, was was strong here. Yeah, I'd, overall, totally a four. Yeah, it was not it was not Goldeneye strong, but it was pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um, and then villain. Well, we John Wade. Mm. Pretty good. I love four and a half, baby. I love me some John Wade. I might even give him a five. Jack Wade. I think it's Johnny goes by Jack. Yeah. Yeah, I call him by his license. Yeah, I'm gonna call him uh, <laughs> what <Jackie>. he likes. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna call him <laughs> Jackie Wade. <laughs> Jackie Wade. I was gonna say, uh, what's he say? Johnny Boy? What's the? What's he called? Bond? Uh, Jimbo. Jimbo. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna call him Jimbo, and I was like, that's not what he calls Bond. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think, yeah, totally a five. I, think I, I loved a half, minute, and um, it's sad that it's his final. Yeah, but, uh, I I think it was a, a good ending for him. I honestly think he could have made like ten bras and Bond movies, and I would have been like with this crew, and I've been like, this is so fucking. Yeah, I I think he, if he was in more, I don't think I'd be upset. Yeah, like, he was good. Are you now being like, yeah, I kind of wish you did the Living Day List and License to Kill. No, I thought you were gonna say, <laughs> should Peppers be back? <laughs> I like Wade, and Peppers is only a little bit more than him. <laughs> no. No, I... Nah. I like Dalton. Oh, I do, too. I'm just like... I always wish both of them had different films now. I wish Brosnan was living Dallas to die another day, and Dalton was like the 70s and the, in the yeah. early 80s. Yeah, that would have been cool. Um, yeah, I wish we could move him around. Yeah. Um, and then we have villain. Villain, I'm gonna give a four. Yeah, I was also gonna say four. I, think I like Elliot Carver. I like how he's a crazy man. Yeah. I would have preferred as much as I love Jonathan Price. I think he's a very underrated actor. Mm. He's in a lot of great things. I would have preferred a different actor here. I know Anthony Hopkins was originally cast in the role, but I think that was also a bad decision. Mm-hmm. I think it should have been someone with more youth, and I think that, yeah, that would have been Jeremy Irons. But I know Jeremy Irons had just done Die Hard 3, so that would have probably been like a no-no. So I probably would have said Ali Rickman. I See, I think I like his age. I think I kind of like... I, I could see somebody younger, too, being like, I want to be the best. Yeah. But I like the idea of, because he talks about having moved up the ranks so much, yeah. I like the idea of a dude who's started from the assistant to an editor or whatever, mm-hmm. and now he's like, I'm going to be the best news person ever. Yeah. Which I think requires a little bit of age. Well, I mean, Jeremy Irons have been like 50-something here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so, Why'd you say younger man? Well, because he just like he has like a more like I'm how old like, you, how was he old in this? He's like he's he's like a year older than like, oh okay. a year, yeah, he's a, a year I was older. like, is he like sixty five or something? Because he doesn't look that at all. He he. Uh, oh, I'm saying Jeremy Irons would work better because I think that Elliot Carver is someone who's so like 
appearance conscious mm. that I, I imagine someone who's like gorgeous. <laughs> That's, and maybe I don't like the big banners because she's ugly. Yeah. <laughs> like, how could this guy love himself so much? Yeah. <laughs> It would I would have liked that the banners were just Steve Jobs, but they just pretended yeah. it was Elliot the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> or it's like an extremely airbrushed version of him. You know who would have been good? Ed Harris, because he pretty much played this part in the Truman Show. That, I think, would actually be perfect. They even, like, dress the same. Exactly. Yeah. Um... You know, I, I like the character. I think John the Price did a good job, especially since you know they're giving him pages the day of most of the yeah. time, uh, and they made him do a thing where he went. Whoa, 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 I, mean, whoa. I almost want that to be ad libbed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to be like, I'm gonna do kung fu moves back at her. Henchman, uh, fake Grant, like one and a half. Yeah, Stamper's getting a, a one for me. It's, it's, it's going to be a nah for me, dog. I'm a big fan of Gupta, though. Gupta is, Goop- uh, I'm going to give him a three because he doesn't do anything. What do you mean? He's the one who got the encryption thing. Yeah. He's the one who set everything up. He's the one who told him, Elliot, his wife was like knew Bond was a spy and yeah, found out Bond, Bond was a spy. He gets held hostage. Yeah, that's not a, that's not something a henchman does. <laughs> Well, Usually I mean, the villain gets he's, held hostage, he's, and the henchman he's, saves the hen- the guy. He's supposed to be like the fat computer guy, though. Like, was Boris a good henchman? Yes. yes. Yeah, but what did he do to Bond? He yelled at her while Bond was in the room. He was a henchman to her, or he was a villain for her. Where Zana was a, was a henchman that. for that. Yeah. No, that's a good point. That that's a good rebuttal for that. Yeah, because I was like, dude, I got the perfect example. <laughs> I was like, it's the last movie. <laughs> there was another computer. Yeah, guy. but Boris is way different. Yeah, and Boris has, has a lot more f- screen time. Does he? Because Gupta's like when Gupta's on screen, he like he'll like say four things and then he'll leave. Or, yeah, where Boris is rolling that. around, being like, that's because like, giving yeah. riddles and shit and pulling out fucking monitors and fucking posting fucking hacking the FBI. I mean, calling yeah. them slugheads. See, I I didn't really like the slughead part. I thought that thing. I thought that was like a little too much extra character stuff. That I was like, I get it. He's a hacker. Like, I like it because I yeah, think it makes I think, you care about. It makes you care about them more. Yeah, and so when, it, it builds their relationship for sure. Yeah, with yeah, Gupta, he just like I bought the thing. Uh, Bond was banging is banging your wife. Um, I also I have like this is set up. So we're gonna blow people up. And died. And then, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. I loved him, though. I think it's because I would like to b- play his part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, please, please cast me as Gupta. <laughs> the Gupta. I'm giving him, a, I'm giving him like a two and a half or a three. I'd go three and a half to four, probably. You've talked me down mm-hmm. off the edge of five. <laughs> now, Dr. Kemper. Kemper's five. Yeah. Uh, five That's, fucking stars. I, I still am. A little iffy about where the comedy stuff was, but I don't think that's his fault. It's like perfect. Yeah, he's so funny, and he uh, he delivers all the lines perfectly too. Yeah, and like he has menace. He's with, like, with the comedy. Oh man, oh this is so embarrassing. Yeah, this I don't so want to do this. <laughs> okay, give me your keys. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, uh, five stars, hundred percent easily. Car uh, gadgets. Oh Next, boy. so a little ahead, we got story first. Story, which I think is like a four, because yeah. there there is some shit where it's like, yeah, you wrote this today. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. I think I think like I said, I think this is like a miracle that it's as good as it is. Mm-hmm. I don't think Tomorrow Never Dies should be as a, as good a movie as it it, mm, it is. That makes sense. Uh, and I think that with out Pierce Brosnan. It probably would not come off this way. Like if this was a Daniel Craig movie, this would be in this would be Quantum of Solace. Yeah. Oh, easily. And if there was more, it would just be a, a more. Movie. <laughs> yeah, this would be par for the course. <laughs> it, uh, it would actually be Moonraker too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
and then cinematography. Cinematography is fucking yeah, four yeah. and a half. This was this was a beautiful looking movie. A lot less shift shift focuses, but it's still pretty good. They still sprinkled some in there. Yeah, uh, and there was a lot of varieties to the shots too. I liked it. Uh, now our gadgets, which there's a lot. Phenomenal. The phone, love it. Yeah, the phone is what I like. It's like a practical device that it has like eight things in it. Mm-hmm. I think that's literally the only gadget, Nick. There's the watch. All right. Uh, the car we do separate. I think because it's Yeah, just, he doesn't it's... really show anything off because there's no Q branch thing. Yeah, we, we do it at the Wayland's hideout. Yeah. That's where okay, so Dragon. Out. Dragon's pretty cool. Dragon's cool. Dragon the, can be fun. With the, with the... That was so... I just imagined Bond with the the like pocket fan. Mm-hmm. Um, the paper fan uh, that's used a lot in like Asian theater. Uh, just him walking around with that in his pocket always is a pretty great imagery. Yeah. Uh, there's a new gun, which isn't really a gadget. And then the watch, which has that one thing that breaks the glass. Which I thought was fine. Yeah. The encoder itself is, a, I would guess, a gadget, but I don't really count it as no. one. We usually don't count villain stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say I, the phone is phenomenal. Yeah. The phone is what I like in gadgets. Where I'm like, oh, yes. It's not a camera that has all the parts to be a rifle in the box with it. Yeah. It's like actually something that's believable. I... I wish this came out before, uh, or I wish this came out after, like, Sidekicks came out, because it's like a Nokia, not flip phone, but it splits in half like the Sidekicks did, and I'm oh. like, damn, I I want it to just be a Sidekick, because yeah. it, it does the exact same thing. I thought you were talking about the movie Sidekicks, so oh, like no. the, the, the early 90s movie with Chuck Norris? Like- <laughs> no, the... The flip phones that flipped sideways, yeah, like I, it slid up. Yeah, I know. What you're I wish about. that. I think that would make a perfect gadget phone, but that wasn't out yet. So this is like the the imagine if phones did this, and I think it works great. Because I imagine if a uh, henchman picked up that phone, like when the doctor got it, he'd be like, "Why the fuck does this split in half?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just open it and look at it. Yeah, I yeah gadgets from here. I'm going four and a half. Yeah, I'm I'm probably like four four and a half. Car five. This is the best yeah, the car cars. outside of Living Daylights. Yeah, I still think Living Daylights is way better. But yeah, the too. gadgets in this one are so much better. The way yeah, the, the car in Living Daylights looks the best of all the cars, in my opinion, of, yeah. the, of the series. But this car is spectacular, and I love. I dude, it's the, the chase scene itself is this like the image of Bond like gleefully in the backseat of the car controlling this thing. Yeah. on his phone is oh, phenomenal. It's so great. This movie is phenomenal. Yeah, it's pretty good. And uh, so that, that it? that's it for the rating stuff. Well, that well, we have a we had a short episode today. It felt that this movie the second time watching it through, uh, there was a lot of stuff that's just rehashing stuff that we already know. Mm-hmm. Like there, as like we have the movie playing on mute while we're going through it, we were like probably two chapters ahead at some points. And I was like, whoa, we are gliding through this. <laughs> well, yeah, that's going to include the episode. Uh, my final rating of the film will be probably four and a half stars. I love it. Yeah. I fucking, I, I adore this movie. Mm. Um, next week, we're going to be doing our my the first Bond movie I ever saw. <gasps> so even if it's bad, it's probably going to get five stars. Because <laughs> I'm... It's it's too close to home, man. There's, I can't wait till I get to say like the same things about Casino. And Mark's like, shut the fuck up. That doesn't matter. <laughs> you <laughs> well, can't just dude, like well, it because of nostalgia. <laughs> the thing about Casino is like, while I dislike Craig as Bond, Casino Royale is genuinely one of the best James Bond movies. That's beautiful. I'm glad I didn't pick a bad one like yeah, you. <laughs> because Because like... It is just Batman Begins. Yeah. So, and Batman Begins is probably the best Batman movie, or one of the top, top five best Batman movies mm-hmm. ever made, so it's like, I would have to, I have to, I have to agree. Yeah. <laughs> Good. We'll see how much he fights me when we get to Casino. 
I know. Or if he, I might have to just be complete contrary and just like find things. <laughs> like his shirt was unbuttoned in the last scene. And, that was buttoned up. And the then movie's stupid. And I will go. This movie is stupid. You're right. <laughs> I can't even figure continuity out. This thing's a piece of shit. Yeah, it's also made by the guy who made Goldeneye. You can't fuck that up. Yeah, that's true. Goldeneye was so good. Yeah, I do not think this. I mean, I know you agree. This was not as good as Goldeneye. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, Goldeneye was so good. Goldeneye is a Bond is the Bond film you get once a decade. Yeah, once a decade you can get a Bond <laughs> movie that just blows everything out of the water and it's stayed true so far. Yeah, <laughs> I think like I mean the sixties you had a consistent base, but then like. On Majesty's Secret Service is like oh, way yeah. above the rest. Way above too. Spy Who Loved Me is way above the rest of the seventies. Dude, I remember watching Majesty's and being like, "Oh, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me?" And then we go back down. I'm like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> what about the one we just watched? Yeah. It was so good." But, the eighties, I think, was probably Living Daylights. Yeah, Living Daylights was so good. I really liked Living Daylights. Yeah. Once a decade, we yeah, can get we like, can get a Vaughn movie. Every time I think back to Living Daylights, I'm like. Oh, I did really like that. Mm -hmm. But But anyway, so next week is going to be The World Is Not Enough. And then the week after that, we're going to be doing Brosnan's final Bond movie, which is notoriously known as the worst Bond movie of all time. (laughs) I disagree with it, but I I still think it's a piece of shit, but I don't think it's the worst. (laughs) Okay. Um, But anyway, we'll get to it when we get to it. Uh, Thanks for listening. As always, watch our films on YouTube. You know, keep following us here on Spotify. (laughs) Once and, we get there. Yeah, you know, once we once Nick figures that out. <laughs> uh and keep following us here on YouTube and then Alice Media Podcast, watch two ninety six show, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great day. See you. Have a good one.